Welcome to The 101 on Sports here on Fox 2. I'm Randy Carricker, and it's great to have you with us. And tonight we're going to talk some auto racing, the 7th Bomberito 500, coming up at Worldwide Technology Raceway, August 26th and 27th. Seven have been here. Curtis Francois is the owner of Worldwide Technology Raceway and kind enough to stop by and spend some time with us. Uh, Curtis, it's always good to see you. Thanks for stopping by, first of all. Oh, I love it. It's great to be talking about racing and talking about the Bomberito 500 coming up. All that's going on at Worldwide Technology Raceway. It's just exciting times in the in the in St. Louis, the St. Louis region, and just thrilled to see uh, racing flourishing here. And it, it really is amazing when you think about the fact that racing is flourishing in St. Louis because a decade ago, a little more than a decade ago, what was then Gateway International Raceway was closed down, and you decided, you know what, we we should have racing in St. Louis. What first of all went into your decision? to resurrect what was then Gateway International Raceway? Well, I had, you know, a lot of experience with uh, Worldwide Technology Raceway and then Gateway International through my racing career. And so I had a particular uh, connection. And uh, we were thrilled when that racetrack opened in 1997. IndyCar was here for the first time. Motorola, I believe, with the sponsor. And just really a neat time. And then that was the high point. And for there, for the next uh, decade or so, um, it just didn't seem to come together the way that it was envisioned. Uh, I had a lot of great times racing there. And so when the racetrack closed in 2010, um, I recognized this was a this was a world class facility, tremendous location. I was very busy and really had no interest in in purchasing a racetrack, getting involved in this. But uh, I said to to the folks that were trying to market the racetrack, look, if if someone doesn't step up here on the national side of things and take over the racetrack, just give me a call and 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 I'll take a look at it and see what we can do. Well, lo and behold, uh, six eight months later. I get the phone call that, uh, are you still interested in talking? And so that's really how it came about. And it came about with the recognition that it, it's a tremendous location. Mm -hmm. um, and St. Louis has a deep, rich history of, of motorsports. Um, going back all the way to the World's Fair in 1904 when there was the Budweiser Cup. Uh, they weren't going too fast in 1904, mm -hmm. uh, but they did race at the, at the World's Fair. So there's this deep um, connection to racing in St. Louis. And just from my standpoint, I recognized that there was a lot of untapped potential in St. Louis and thought that, well, if someone else wasn't going to take this project on, I'll take a real close look at it and see if I can make it work. So if people drive by now, they see this massive complex, it's in great condition. What was it like on the day that you agreed to take over? What, what did the track look like then? Well, my first visit, I was unable to drive across the, pave, the parking <laughs> lots. Uh, there was some sort of industrial strength weeds that, out there that were six, eight foot tall, and you really couldn't drive across the parking lots. So it was in, it, it quickly had fallen into disrepair. But the, the, the guts, the framework, um, all of the foundation part of, of, the, of, the, of the facility was only 13 years old. It was not old. And so uh, what I did find out is, is quickly that, that there's a lot of maintenance involved with making it look uh, sharp on a daily basis. But we, the bones were there. The racetrack was solid. The racetrack had been uh, repaved. We had great grandstands, tremendous exposure to the highway system, it, five minutes from the arch. All of that goes into looking at the business proposition to see whether or not I, I thought I could make it work. And we have the Bomberito 500 now. We have the Enjoy Illinois 300 NASCAR race. But really the foundation of what was able to get things going was NHRA, wasn't it? That was such an important phone call. I remember that. Um, and they actually reached out to us when they got wind that I was looking at it. I was simply doing due diligence at that time, trying to figure out a business model that we thought could make it work. And at least to hold it for a little while until we could really get some momentum. And that phone call from the NHRA, uh, it really was one of those ones that was foundational in my decision to take on uh, on this this project. And so uh, on a handshake, I, um, I, I did a deal with the NHRA. I flew up to Indianapolis, saw what was going on in Indy with the, uh, with the nationals there, talked with the leadership, and ultimately came to the decision that they were in. They believed in the St. Louis market. Mm -hmm. They knew an awful lot more about drag racing than I did at the time. And so we felt like that that was a sign that, okay, 
here's a way that at least we can put a flag in the ground and and get started. What was the the early time like with the NHRA there? What uh, because essentially you're you're a new track again. So what was that like? Well, you know, I inherited a lot of of, of history from the racetrack. A lot great, some not so much. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, we took a, a look a look early on to see, you know, why did the track ultimately close? What were the reasons behind that? And and went about solving those issues one by one. Some of those I could do immediately. Some of those happened within a year. Some of those took a decade uh, to make sure that that we were on the right track and, and we, there was the right perception of our of our facility there that would attract racing ongoing into the future. So it all started there. I repaved the racetrack uh, right away for the uh, NHRA. That sent a huge signal to them that uh, we were serious about this. And that kind of reverberated throughout the entire industry that, hey, there is somebody here looking at this on a different way than it's ever been done before. And one of the things about the track, if again, if people drive by or if they're ever playing golf at Gateway, there's always the noise from the cars. It's not just the, the races that you have. There's always something going on at, at Worldwide Technology Raceway, isn't there? Yes, that was a, a big change for us was to recognize, as I mentioned before, what, what were the failure points? Why did it not work? And what I recognized is that there was not enough people engaging with the facility on a day-to-day -day basis and so we went about changing the schedule and saying okay I want folks coming through the gate on a daily basis so we built the cartplex and uh, really has that has now grown into a great karting facility tremendous following there that got folks coming through the gate every day they get used to making that drive five minutes across the the uh, Mississippi there felt like a long way to some folks until you do it and realize it's no different than you know driving in the metro anyway yeah. So. And, and we always talk about when we're promoting the Enjoy Illinois 300 that there's people from 48, 49 states. Same thing with the Bomberito 500 coming up on August 26th and 27th. A, a huge national demographic comes to the track. But how important is the, the core St. Louis audience that you get? It's critical, absolutely critical, because that brings so much energy to the racetrack especially since you have fans that now are again as i mentioned before calling it their home track they're taking pride in it so they are an extension of us the st louis community the st louis racing community fans are extension of us as they're welcoming fans that are coming from the other 48 states around the country um, there is a special vibe at our racetrack. It is that Midwest hospitality that only we can do in St. Louis, uh, greatest sports city in the country, in my opinion. And we show it every time there's a big event there. Uh, I see it with new fans coming to the area, interacting with the, with the St. Louis fans. So just proud of St. Louis and how we make that work and how we make that happen. Um, it's unscripted, but it's pretty special. Curtis Francois from Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Bomberito Automotive Group 500 coming up on August 26th and 27th. Drivers love this track too, and we're going to find out why from Curtis coming up on the 101 on Sports here on Fox 2. Welcome back to the 101 on Sports. I'm Randy Carricker, joined tonight by Curtis Francois, the owner of Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Bomberito Automotive Group 500 IndyCar race coming up August 26th and 27th at Worldwide Technology Raceway. And we're going to talk about the race later on in the, in the show, but it's the 26th and 27th. This is a spectacle. It's not just... Uh, an IndyCar race. It's a, it's a weekend spectacle that you guys put on. Yeah, I think that's part of our MO. And we, we took things to a whole nother level back in, in uh, 2017 with our first Bomberito 500, uh, with really making it a, a, a spectacle, as you said, something for the entire family to come out and spend the day and see a lot of racing, great mm -hmm. racing, uh, but also just having a great experience on our midway. And now we've grown and expanded so many of the 
offerings. Uh, when fans come out for the Bomberito 500 uh, this August, they're going to get to experience the all-new Gateway Garage experience. Most of them will have not seen that before. Mm -hmm. That is a way that fans get to get right in the garages, up close and personal to the drivers and the cars. So that's just one more thing that we're adding to the entire uh, event. Uh, it's just exciting to see how it all comes together. And again, those fans show up and are energetic about being there. I want to know about something that you mentioned in our first segment, that you were a driver. I, I need to know about your, your driving career. Yeah, so I, I would not be a track owner had it not been for my interest in, in, in driving. I uh, grew up uh, all things fast that I could get my <laughs> hands on, and uh, that, that at some point transitioned into sports car racing. I started racing actually right there at the racetrack in a completely different configuration before it was rebuilt. Uh, and so that gave me that entree into to, to racing that I needed to understand what it felt like to be a driver uh, as you visited other racetracks. And so I wanted to make sure when the drivers showed up to my racetrack, they felt that they were appreciated and that we recognized the hard work that goes into being a driver. It's, it's not all just the glamour. Mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly a lot of hard work as you're traveling, being away from your family. And so we try to welcome them. So how does that manifest itself as you, as you do welcome drivers to Worldwide Technology Raceway? Well, I, I think what we do from the time that they come in, they, they, you know, we talk to them ahead of the race, say, hey, here's what you can learn about St. Louis. Here's some great, right? Here's the Curtis picks of places to go for, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, for dinner and for staying and all of those. But also, uh, we always I took a page out of the Oscars years ago, and uh, we give them a swag bag, well, all things St. Louis, uh, again, so that they, they recognize that we are, are paying attention to, to the sacrifice that they make being away from their families every weekend. And so uh, that, I think, has gone a long way. And we also make sure that we address anything and everything that is brought up as a suggestion. If it's viable, we're going to do it. As a driver, did you have a favorite type of vehicle? You know, I, back when I was a dri when I was driving in the early days, I was driving all open wheel cars, mm -hmm. uh, and so I would have to say that was what I, I cut my teeth on, so to speak. But uh, having now have the racetrack that's the only racetrack in the country that has uh, the NHRA drag racing, we have IndyCar and NASCAR. I love it all. I really do. And I've been in every one of those types of cars. Uh, the first time I had the NHRA drag racing out and I stood between two 11,000 horsepower drag racers taking off, <laughs> I had a whole different level of respect for what they were doing. I thought they were crazy, you know, <laughs> strapping themselves to a rocket and lighting the fuse, but uh, really uh, enjoy that. And then clearly with, with uh, the NASCAR Cup Series race that we see, you see just a whole nother le level and tremendous talent in that series. And I don't want to gloss over what you just said because there's a lot of big mega tracks out there, Phoenix, Dallas, Chicago, all over the, the, the place. And, and St. Louis is the only one with IndyCar, NASCAR, and NHRA. This is the only track that has all three. It's the only track that has all three. Uh, and it was made possible really over the last decade as we uh, continue to expand the racetrack. Uh, when I purchased the racetrack, it was about 160 acres. We're over 700 and some odd acres right now. So, you know, we fixed those problems that needed to be fixed. Parking was one. Uh, when I inherited the racetrack, there just wasn't enough. So we went about fixing that. We fixed traffic flow. All the basics that, mm -hmm. that, that are not uh, that exciting to talk about as far as uh, 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 compared to racing, but it is absolutely critical to get those fans in and out, particularly ones coming from uh, St. Louis and from out of town that that uh, didn't have a great experience before I took over. We fixed all of that. So. Was there a driver that you were attracted to or attached to as a youngster you, the, the, you thought oh that's because uh, i remember watching al Unser in the indy 500 and, and aj foyt in nascar those were like the two guys that i followed was there somebody for you yeah you know I, I, there's there's a couple and there's certainly many many now but uh as a young man uh, i was seven years old and i'm not sure you would call this fellow a racer but i went to what was then a gateway international raceway it's it, it was had an eighth mile uh, drag strip racing in the opposite direction and i went there with my family to see 
Evil Knievel. Oh, cool. Jump it, jumping school yep. buses. <laughs> and so in my office today, I have one of the original photos that I found at the racetrack of, of Evil Knievel being there. That, that I, I don't know. He was a talented guy. I'm yeah, not sure you'd a, call him a racer. But <laughs> he was, everybody knew him. <laughs> yeah, everybody knew him. But, you know, since then, you know, the, the Mario Andretti's of the world, uh, you know, I've become friends with them. Uh, the Ray Halls, you know, guys that are just uh, fixed in the racing world uh, you know Richard Petty has been to town many times now he'd never really been to st. Louis before we took over uh, these guys that just live and breathe racing and they built racing in in our country yeah. um, love the history love the stories and so I couldn't pick one of them because they're all just so exciting to talk to you love this town and one of the other aspects to worldwide technology raceway is how involved the, the track is with the community. You, you really do span the entire community from a, a community advantage standpoint, don't you? Yeah, and, and, and we felt like, I felt like early on that um, my goal was not just to bring back racing and make that just a business. It became apparent that we could provide, provide an opportunity, be that shining light on the hill in the Metro East. And so once I recognized early, this would have been in 2012, that my mission was greater than what I initially thought. And so not long after we took over, I met Jackie joyner Kersey and, and was able to go over to her, uh, her center, talk with her, learn what she's been doing there, and began to feel the passion that she has. And, and so that partnership started great things. We, we started uh, the Raceway Gives Foundation. Uh, that serves uh, really underprivileged kids. And, and we utilize the racetrack as the draw to get them to learn STEM. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you're going to the racetrack, it's not tough to sell that to a kid. Uh, and so we're at the same time, we're doing things through our upcoming, we have the Junior 500. Um, that is where kids come and they build a go-kart together. And then a couple days later, they're racing it on race weekend. Um, really a neat way to just reach out in that community. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. We are through and through trying to utilize and leverage what we have at the racetrack. And there's so much community synergy because uh, you're doing those great things on that end. And the Bomberito Automotive Group, I know, has been a stalwart for you since this race started. Right. I don't think that you'd find a, a better uh, partner there than the Bomberito 500 and, and John Bomberito and his family. The way that they've taken this on as a, a personal commitment, not only to make the event successful for their business standpoint, but also to give back to St. Louis. They've been a fixture in this city for so many years. And we just could not uh, thank them more for, for believing us early on and recognizing what a great opportunity it is for, for their brand. Uh, as, as this will be, the Bomberito 500 will be broadcast on NBC Live. I believe that will be the only live broadcast uh, of a major sporting event, um, at least I will this year. Unless something happens yeah. uh, miraculously between now and the end of the season, we should be the only one that is uh, showcasing uh, St. Louis to the, the broader uh, country on, on live uh, TV. So Bomberito recognized that. That was something that probably was not in the plan in 2017, <laughs> right, but right. it's happened and good things happen to good people. And what a cool weekend it's going to be. We're going to give you some details about the weekend of the Bomberito Automotive Group 500. Curtis Francois of Worldwide Technology Raceway with us on The 101 on Sports here on Fox 2. Welcome back to the 101 on Sports. We head down the stretch with our friend Curtis Francois of Worldwide Technology Raceway here on Fox 2. And the race is coming up August 26th and 27th. Let's start with this. Tickets. How can people get tickets? Always best to go to the website, uh, www.raceway.com. But we do encourage you to call anytime and talk to a live person there and learn about the best seat for you in the entire facility. Uh, we have a lot of seats uh, available there that, that uh, we just like to tell, hey, here's the best spot for this view. Do you like to see them sh downshifting and, and braking coming into turn one, or you like to see the maximum speed and you want to be right there on the front stretch? There, stretch. There's always a, a great seat for everyone, and uh, but tickets are, are selling well, and now's the time to get going going on it. Uh, it's, it's the wake up call right now to make sure that folks are going to wwtraceway.com and, and buying their tickets. 
and uh, a lot going on in addition to the race. As a, a car enthusiast, I really like the idea of the Corvette show that you're going to have. Well, I'm a Corvette enthusiast <laughs> myself. Uh, needless to say, I am a car enthusiast. Yeah. And uh, so it just really kind of came together recently that uh, I actually was restoring an older Corvette and met with many of the guys in the clubs and said, you know, why don't you guys come on out to the race? And that has grown into something, I think, that we're much bigger than we had thought. So we're going to have a huge car corral there uh, with all the Corvette Corvette owners that bring their cars out. Everyone's invited to, 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 uh, that belongs to these clubs. And as well as that, we have a car show going on. We have concerts going on. The Midway will be just energetic. Uh, there'll be autograph sessions with the drivers. And I think what's super uh, uh, neat this year is to come into the into the infield and enjoy that new garage, the Gateway mm -hmm. Garage experience. So And being down so close to the vehicles, and I had a chance to do that for the NASCAR race, uh, it's something that a, you don't get to see, but you don't get to hear because the, the sound really does strike your chest, doesn't it? It really does. <laughs> and, and you know, there's totally different sounds in yep. racing. Uh, and no doubt uh, when you're on top of these... Uh, the Indy car, uh, the cars in the new Gateway Garage experience, when they start up, it's it's something like you've never heard before. It's a much higher pitched, uh, and you recognize, hey, I'm in the presence of a real race car here. These guys are going to get serious with these things quickly. So it's a great opportunity to come and experience that. But so much that, that goes into these events with the live music that we do, uh, we have several more things that will be announced in the coming week or two uh, for extra uh, opportunities to just have fun at the racetrack, some more music acts that we're going to be announcing. So just I think it's one of those things. Put it on your calendar. It's a great way to end the summer. Uh, the Bomberito 500 is now becoming a tradition, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just going to be great that this could be broadcast live as well. Yeah, seven years of the Bomberito Automotive Group 500. Uh, Curtis, as, as we head down the stretch here when you bought the track with where we are now in august of 2023 where does where you are match your original vision you know my original vision was to get it reopened and and see kind of where it went from there and that quickly changed to realizing potential um and so we signed the NHRA, that leads to um, the NASCAR coming in uh, with the truck race, which then shows, uh, hey, we can put some people in the, in the oval. Mm -hmm. And the oval hadn't been full in a long time. And then that first Bomberito 500, when we had packed stands, that really opened that door for NASCAR to see that something special was happening in St. Louis. So uh, the Bomberito 500 has is, is been a, a just a, a critical piece of our growth. Uh, we're just so thankful to the Bomberito family for joining us. It's a fun journey with them. We really enjoy that. We've become great friends through racing. And now John Bomberito is into racing himself, and he has a NASCAR Xfinity team and whatnot. So uh, he got the he got the bug as well. <laughs> uh, we just enjoy being being. Uh, together on these events. And with everything going on, is there anything else that could be added to the calendar over at Worldwide Technology Raceway? You know, we're always looking for where the energy is in racing. So a couple of years ago, we added Formula Drift. That's become very successful. And we have a new event this year. Uh, it's the SVRA, which is the Vintage Racing Group and Association, as well as Trans Am Racing will be coming that same weekend. So that's the third weekend in September. Uh, we'll get going on that. That has grown amazingly so over the years. Uh, but we're always looking, uh, and we're looking for things that bring energy and excitement to the racing into the facility. Well, thank you for what you've done for the St. Louis sports scene, the St. Louis racing scene. It's a phenomenal setup over at Worldwide Technology Raceway, and you need to check it out again. Tickets available at WWTRaceway.com. Curtis, thanks so much for stopping by. It's always good to see you. Great to be with you, Randy. Thank you. Thanks. Curtis Francois of Worldwide Technology Raceway, again, August 26th and 27th, the Bomberito Automotive Group 500 IndyCar Race. I'm Randy Carricker. Thanks so much for joining us on The 101 on Sports, and we'll see you next week right here on Fox 2.